back by not so popular demand. <laughs> One or a couple of you had asked me to talk about the referee for this fight, which is, uh, as we've been saying for a long time, gonna be a very important aspect of this fight. Usyk's been cut before? Must have been in his amateur days. Fury obviously has, we know this too. Anyway, just noticed that. Referee and judges in place for the undisputed, blah, 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 blah. We'll talk about the referee in just a second. Mark Nelson. The judges are Spain's Manuel Oliver Palmero, Canada's Craig Metcalf, and Jacksonville, Wisconsin's Mike Fitzgerald. The two latter names ring a bell, but I can't, you know, I don't remember any atrocious scorecards, but I mean, so what? So they're not the usual suspects, right? But the usual suspects are usually Vegas judges, maybe New York judges. So it is what it is, right? But we have Palermo, who sounds like he's Italian. Like all judges, he's been known to hand in the odd contentious scorecard. And in 2002, he had Johnny Nelson over Guillermo Jones. Don't remember that fight. But does anybody remember any of Johnny Nelson's fights? Probably not. Nine years later, he was one of the two judges to favor Hellenius over Derek Chisora. That was a good scorecard. Uh, just because there's controversy, right, doesn't mean... There's a problem. Metcalf, for his part, Canadian judge. He was the only one to score Zoria over Regis Progre. Um, a lot of people thought Zoria won that fight. So, and he went against the uh, A side. So, I mean, that bodes well, right? I think that bodes well for fair judging. Um, and, wait, who's this? Also Metcalf. He thought that Briedis had done enough to beat Usyk or to get a draw. And, I mean, I could see why somebody would make that mistake. Um, I think it was a bad scorecard, but it is what it is. And then he also scored Andre Ward over Carl Frotch, 115-113. Excellent scorecard. That was a very close fight. And then he judged Mayweather, 117-111 over Alvarez. Now, I've stated in the past that that was a close fight. Uh, some of the rounds were very close, but I could see why you would score it like that also, right? A lot of very close rounds. I didn't think Alvarez won the fight, or you couldn't have made a case for him winning but I thought you could have made a case for a close fight or uh, on the cards or even 117-111. So, you know, decent. Not too bad there either. Fitzgerald had John Ryder over Daniel Jacobs in a close fight. That's pretty good too. So, you know, but, but here's the deal, guys. As I've stated many times in the past, just because somebody's record is spotless or we can't remember any atrocious scorecards or refereeing that doesn't mean they can be bought and paid for but this is insofar as the judges go this is probably as good as you're gonna get especially in a fight of this magnitude so you know this i think this bodes well for a fair decision right or I don't think we're going to be complaining about the judges. I could be completely wrong here because, again, anybody could be bought and paid for. But um, the same bad, the same bad. I'm, I'm okay with this, right? Just on paper. Now we're going to turn over to Mark Nelson, who his most 
memorable, and it wasn't very memorable at all. Performance for me was, at least recently, was in the Shakur Stevenson versus Jamel Herring fight. Now, Shakur is a notable low blower, but in this fight, he showed you that he knows what a low blow is, and it was actually Herring who was low blowing a lot more. So, right off the bat, the referee, not only did he indicate where exactly where the belt line was and that you had to keep your punches above, right, the belt line, he was very stern with Shakur Stevenson right off the bat, telling him to step back and manhandling him a little bit. So I think Shakur felt the vibe. He didn't have one of his brothers, right? He ten, he had since since this fight. That's all he's had is his brothers refereeing his fights. Go figure. <laughs> because this dude was actually pretty stern with Shakur. But is he a good referee, right? I guess we're going to answer that question now. But Crawford, simply tell Jamel Herring, Dre, you got to commit. You <laughs> I, I couldn't help myself. Now, a lot of the little bits that we're going to study here have to do with the referee, but a lot of what I wanted to talk about that the referee was doing coincided with uh, some not-so-subliminal messaging, right? You got to commit, bro. <laughs> we're going to leave it at that for now, right? Um, 519 is where I want to go. I wonder why. Look, fellas, it's not. <laughs> not a good look. What's not a good look, Andre? That jab right there from Jamel Herring was a half jab trying to get back to defense. It was so obvious that Herring wasn't committing to anything. He wasn't committing to his punches. And he got called out on it, but. These commentators, man, they were polishing a massive fucking turd. What was hilarious is they were talking about Shakur's range and distance control when Herring had a four-inch reach advantage, two-inch height advantage, faster feet. His hands were just as fast, and Shakur was slowly plodding into punching range without moving his head, without any zero proactive head movement. But... Sorry to sneak another one in there. But, I mean, guys, you asked me about Mark Nelson. So I had to watch this fucking turd all over again. So you get what you get. 11-19. Hopefully we got some referee action now. Oh, no. Oh, no. One more. One more. And over that third, those three rounds of shock that he experienced. Bomack. What's Bomack going to say? Bomack, the trainer of Harry, the champion. What's he saying? Push him. So the referee was pretty good about breaking up the clinches. Not perfect, but he was decent. Um, when the guys fell into a clinch and somebody was holding and hitting, he was good about splitting them up. He let them work initially when they first fell into a clinch. But once it was obvious that somebody was clinching and trying to work, or he was clinching and just getting punched, he would let the offending fighter get off a punch or two, which was okay, and then he would just stop the action, which I thought was pretty good. I got you. Put your hands 
Excuse me, my correction. Herring needs to push Corey Stevenson to his left. Herring's just standing there, getting punched, not doing anything. Lost that angle for Shakur Stevenson that he talked about in the beginning, which is march four behind the right jab and put pressure on Shakur Stevenson. And he's doing the right thing because he's moving to his left. He's cutting off that angle. Punch him, punch him, punch him. Bomack just kept telling him the whole fight. Punch him, punch him. Why was he saying that? Because Shakur was right there to get fucking punched and Herring wasn't doing it. All right, what, what do we got next? 22-14. I'm not editing this shit. You don't pay me enough. <laughs> that conversation is okay that's something i didn't like I, I don't think it's corruption and it's not atrocious but you know he's grabbing the fighter's hand before he yells break that's not good right because shakur's back is turned he doesn't see that Mark Nelson is holding um, Herring, right? So he could punch him as the referee is holding him. So the referee is handic um, handcuffing him, handicapping Herring, and gives Shakur a chance to punch at him as he's handicapped. Very, very, very bad. First you yell break, and then you try to grab both fighters at the same time. I'd be okay with this had he yelled break first. And then if Shakur punches on the break, right, take appropriate action. So it's, it's a little, but again, I don't think this is corruption. I think he's just, he could be better. He's not a great referee, right? 22-16. 22-26. What do we got here? Keep him up, guys. Okay. So. Soon enough, if he can. I thought this was interesting. You're going to see Shakur getting low blowed. Continue on the path he's been on in his career. That was an atrocious low blow. And Herring did a pretty good job of low blowing on the blind side of the referee. But I mean, it was so atrocious. Even if you're behind the fighter, you should be able to see or not see, but uh, deduct, deduce that the punch is low, right? But Herring got away with quite a few low blows on the belt, mostly, uh, on the blind side of the referee. So it was Shakur complaining to the referee, right? That made the referee call it out. So this guy could be influenced, right? The team Usyk picked this guy? Or were they okay with him because of this? Right? It's a little... You're not supposed to be influenced by the fighter, right? You're supposed to see this yourself and call it out before the fighter has a chance to complain. So not great, but I mean... You could puppet this guy a little bit, maybe, you know, puppet master him a little bit. So, you know, this is a good and a bad thing, right? It's a good and a bad thing because if Usyk is getting low blow like he did um, versus Dubois and the referee happens to miss it, but he calls it out and he starts acting, right? Then maybe he'll catch a break. Right, or if Usyk just starts pointing out these low blows, right? Had Shakur done that from the very beginning, he didn't because I don't think Shakur knows what a low blow is exactly, right? Although, you know, he really wasn't low blowing in this fight. He wasn't even going on the belt much, so maybe he does, right? 
But if Usyk starts working the referee, right, right off the bat, which is not illegal, or his corner starts working the referee, hey, it looks like you could maybe influence this guy to implement the rules, right? But hopefully, if it's clearly fake or there wasn't a low blow or any infraction, hopefully he's got enough balls and he's paying enough attention to prevent or nip that sort of thing in the in the butt. Where are we at? 2432. What do we got here? He needs a shortening shots, too. Step back. Heron's got to free that hand Step and let both hands. There we go. He wasn't, um, he showed no signs of favoritism. He, he wasn't a great referee, but at the very least, he didn't show, he wasn't corrupt in this fight. And, you know, when Shakur wasn't listening, Shakur's used to not having to listen to these referees, right? Because he's got back. He thinks he could do whatever he wants. But Nelson asserted himself in this fight, which is good, right? And he was manhandling Shakur a little bit, pushing him back. And you could tell the, the little, little boy didn't like that. Now, this is, you know, 150-pound men in, in that ring, right? Roughly about his size. <laughs> Is there going to be, he's going to need more than physical strength, right? To push Fury or Usyk around, all right? He's going to have to assert himself a lot more. So it'll be interesting to see. One of the criticisms is that this guy doesn't do or has never, or at the very least, never done any high profile heavyweight fights or is more used to these smaller guys. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can um, impose himself um, on the fight vocally also, right? Verbally, because is he really strong enough to, to manhandle these guys? No. So he's going to have to gain their respect. So we'll see. Hands go. He's only hitting Shakur to the body. With the left hand, free the right hand up and lift both shots. <laughs> These commentators were polishing and turn. We'll just leave that there. We'll leave that there. Draw your own conclusions. Um, what's next? 2455. <laughs> Anybody want to hear Timothy Bradley polishing this turd? I go play it for yourself. <laughs> Hilarious. Timothy Bradley starts stuttering, commentating on what just happened. Stuttering. 24, 25, 26. Let's go. Bad herring is marching forward with no jab. Good herring is the jab. Of course, Stevenson had no answer for Herring's jab. Zero. No, none whatsoever. When he threw it properly and at Shakur Stevenson. Had to had to throw that in there. Twenty six fifty nine. Oh wait. Yeah. Bomac telling them to basically punch at your opponent. Twenty thirty twenty nine. Through the years. 
See, I don't know if you caught that, but rewind if you didn't. This guy puts his hands on the fighters. What are you doing Put your hands on the fighters? If you want to break the action, you have to yell break first. So he's not a great referee, you know, but here's the deal. We're so used to terrible, terrible refereeing that when we see a guy that's decent, and he's decent, he's C-level, we think that's good refereeing. It ain't, right? Especially with these he- bigger guys, right? You start putting your hands on one guy. Let's say he's put he puts his hands on Usyk. And Usyk, who tends to respect referees, right? Because he wants them to enforce the rules, uh, do their job, right? Let's say he puts his hand on Usyk and Usyk just lets his guard down or stops punching or it gets distracted for a second. And before he yells break, Tyson Fury starts pounding on Usyk, right? Who's distracted, maybe defenseless or whatever, right? This is bad refereeing. Okay. But I don't I don't think he's corrupt or doing this. Um, because he was told to, right, help one guy or whatever. I think he's just not not a great referee. 32-50. Oh, I think that's just a stoppage. Two. So Herring basically quits, even though Shakur was punching himself out for long stretches of these ladder rounds, championship rounds. Eighth round, actually, he started gassing badly. And had to hold a lot and catch his breath. He started barking when he was throwing his punches. Also indicating that he's running out of energy. Because he wasn't doing that previously. Right? So, the power of his punches was... Not that he has any power. But his punches were probably that much less powerful. Because he was really exerting himself. His hand speed wasn't there. He had burst. But that's all he had. Right? And it was clear to see. And even the commentators who were just swinging off his nuts noticed that. And then they started fighting. You know, one started telling the other, not in so many words, but basically you can't. You can't throw shade at Shakur like that. Or don't speak the truth about the guy, right? We got to polish this fucking turn. And Herring, even though Shakur was just gassing pretty badly, actually, and only had a little burst here and there, um, no power, his hand speed was going. Herring just stopped punching, right? He just he just wanted out of the fight. That's what blood does. Yeah. Right? There was really if if you just see that there, right? You're gonna tell yourself well, that's a terrible, terrible stoppage. Well no. The referee noticed what anybody who knows a thing or two about boxing and is paying attention should have noticed too. The guy wasn't there to win, and it became really, really obvious that he quit. So that's why he stopped the fight. So in conclusion, in my opinion, look, again, anybody could be bought and paid for. But we've seen with Usyk that his fights get officiated pretty fairly. So K2, his promotional company, Whoever's behind Usyk, clearly they got some pull. They got power. They're not just going to throw him to the wolves like that. You know what I mean? And because this is in Saudi Arabia, who, in my opinion, are... it's Judging's been pretty good. Now, I'm not saying there have been no rivalries there, right? But... Seems to me that if only because they're new on the scene and they know what the problems are with boxing, what the fans have been complaining about forever, at the they're trying to turn the tide a little bit and at the very least initially make themselves appear honest, right? This is this is part of the whitewashing of, of Saudi Arabia too, right? If only to keep up appearances, whitewash, whatever you want to say. It seems to me that the Saudis have made an attempt to make these fights as legit as possible. Which isn't to say that they're in full control. 
okay? Because things could happen that they don't even, they don't know about behind the scenes. They don't, they can't even influence. But it seems to me like they're trying to do their best and looking at the judges and this referee, I'm going to say we're going to get a pretty, if, if not perfect, if not the rules of boxing perfectly enforced, I think the referee is going to be even-handed, right? He might not be the best referee for the job because, again, he is small and he, he's not great. But at the very least, I see no indication that he's going to favor one guy over the other. And I'm okay with the judges too, right? Again, anything could happen. Anybody could be coaxed, convinced, bought, right? But um, to me, it looks like we're going to get a pretty well-officiated fight through and through. If, if I had to bet my money on, you know, corruption or not, I'm going to go with not. Okay? Which doesn't mean we won't get bad scorecards or questionable decisions by the referee. But that's that's the nature of the sport, right? The average boxing fan has no idea what a low blow is, right? They say clinching is part of boxing, which it's not an argument. What do you even mean by that, right? As an excuse for why it happens, why it's allowed to happen. You know what I mean? They don't know what a scoring blow is. They don't know how to score fights. They don't understand that the guy pushing the action gets the benefit of the doubt. Things of that nature, right? And referees, judges, they're, they're not, they're supposed to understand these things, but they still don't. So, you know, we could still get some questionable shit going on, but I think it's good. If we do, it's going to be mostly due to ignorance and um, incompetence more than corruption that's that's the vibe i get so i i feel okay about the officials and honestly the way as bad as boxing is i this is probably as good as it gets okay so yeah shakur is uh <laughs> in the real fight right now not two years, three years from now, in a row fight, he's food for Lomachenko. Food! And he's going to duck that fight. Unless Loma's, you know, 42 fucking years old. Or has a really, really terrible performance. Or gets beat up by Navarrete and gets a gift decision. Things of that nature, right? But if, if Loma looks great in his next fight, or as well as he did in his last fight, this dude's going to run. Thanks for watching.